all the objects including living and uh, non living substances or uh, uh, non living objects emit radiates uh, heat energy in the form of radiation starting from uh, humans animals plants all the celestial objects such as uh, moon stars star, sun all these uh, objects emit radiations heat energy as radiation so we are able to see distant objects like moon stars and our galaxy system only because of the heat radiations heat radiated emitted heat radiations and also they are in the visible range we are able to see sun moon and the stars only because of the emitted light is in the visible range so these radiations need not be emitted in the visible range only can be emitted in uh, invisible range of electromagnetic spectrum that is uh, um invisible range means uh, it, it is a uh, infrared uh, radiation okay. so all the objects material objects emit radiations naturally they emit radiations in the infrared uh, part of electromagnetic spectrum um at lower temperatures and at uh, ambient conditions it, at higher temperatures objects emit at uh, in the visible range but in the lower and room temperatures these objects mostly emit uh, infrared radiations so these invisible radi radiations these radiations are invisible to our eye so we can make any uh, artificial detectors based on semiconductors to capture those uh, radiations and we can visualize those uh, invisible radiations so that is this type of knowledge is very helpful for the making of uh, night vision camera night vision camera the images this uh, this are infrared radiation source to be thermogram thermo so you can uh, you uh, capture the images even at night time images of any animals or any other uh, objects of interest you at night time by using the infrared detectors so this technique the camera is named as which is using infrared detector is night vision camera next we will move on to least disk material and it is a very basic a excellent setup to determine a coefficient of thermal conductivity the coefficient of thermal conductivity means we are we are, we are going to see the thermal conducting ability that is the rate of heat transfer of the material which is uh, placed in between any two conductors okay or you can use suppose if it is a conductor it is a conduct conductor the whole block is a conductor and you want to determine its uh, property coefficient of thermal conductivity means and you connect this to cold and one end is hot means one end is hot another end is cold in this way you can able to determine coefficient of thermal conductivity of this conductor and in least this method he used a different setup it is based on a least this is known as steel material it is a hollow a 
upper disc is hollow and there is a lower disc this is lower disc and heat enters into the upper disc and leaves at another end of the upper disc there is a steam steam is passed through the upper disc and leaves the another part of the upper disc in between these two lower and upper disc there is a sandwich of uh, it may be a wooden insulator any wood or mica glass anything so insulating material is sandwiched between two conductors so one end is hot so the upper disc is very hot lower disc is that not much hot so when heat uh, steam is allowed to pass through the tube the entire setup is uh, suspended uh, heat is allowed to pass through the uh, steam is allowed to pass through the top disc naturally temperature of the upper disc increases and you can measure its temperature by using a thermometer and it is t1 and in the case of lower disc the another thermometer can be used and the temperature can be measured and its temperature is t2 t2 is the temperature of the lower disc so when heat the upper disc is being heated and the heat is being transported from the upper disc to the lower disc via insulator so now we will see an expression for the rate of conduct transfer of heat rate of transfer of heat to the lower disc through the insulator by means of conduction process so dq here q means heat q is heat okay so rate of transfer of heat by means of conduction process by means of conduction process is directly proportional to cross sectional area cross sectional area of the disk so keep uh, in such a uh, least basic experiment we should keep in mind two aspects one is the these are all disks so uh, circular their geometry is circular as you know and its uh, area area of each and every disks must be same they should be perfectly matched with each other so area of the circle area of the upper disc circle area of the insulating disc that is a wooden disc circle area of the uh, lower disc all should have equal values or perfectly it should match match so a is area pi r square of the circle it is constant it is constant for all this Uh, this including insulating material so here uh, r is obtained from the diameter measurement of any one of the disc since in the case of uh, wooden disc it may bend you will not get accurate value so preferably you can use uh, uh, diameter of any upper disc or lower disc so for that you need to use its uh, dia- use a uh, vernier caliper to determine the diameter and from diameter you will get the value of r so the finally you will get the 
pi r square value. So it is the cross sectional area. Okay. And second uh, one is heat loss to the. So you are all, we are all dealing with heat conduction from upper disk to lower disk via the insulator. And there may be some amount of heat will be dissipated to the environment. So all this heat can be omitted or negligible. So, heat loss via radiation, heat loss via from the upper disk to the environment is negligible. So, these two assumptions are very important. And uh, so, here rate of heat transfer by conduction is directly proportional to area into Temperature difference, temperature of upper disk minus temperature of lower disk. T1 minus T2 divided by thickness, thickness of the bad conductor X or the region in between hot and cold regions. Thickness is the thickness of the material which is placed in between hot region and cold region T2. So this is hot, upper disk is hot, lower disk is relatively cold and the di uh, distance between hot and cold region is defined as the thickness. So, dq by dt equal to, it can be equated by using k. Here k is the coefficient of thermal conductivity, a into t1 minus t2 divided by x. Heat index that is by means of conduction. Rate of transfer of heat by means of conduction via insulator. So heat is transferred from T1 uh, upper disk to lower disk via the insulator. Okay. So here it is uh, heat. Uh, this equation is you can name it as a heat. Gain. This equation gives information about heat gain. And you can name it as equation number 1. So, in this, in this uh, ex experiment, heat is not only gained, but this. Uh, Lower disk also radiates some amount of energy, that is it loss heat energy by means of radiation. By means of radiation, lower disk loss some of its energy. Because the upper disk is at a temperature of 98 degree, it reaches a maximum temperature of 98 degree, closer to steam temperature. Whereas temperature of lower disk will be around uh, maximum it may be around 80 degrees Celsius. So T2 will be around 80 degrees Celsius. After 80 degree, the temperature of lower disk will not further increase. So the reason is the lower disk radiates loss most of energy by means of radiation. So its temperature cannot further increase. Okay. So, after a particular time, the temperature of uh, upper disk would be around 98 degree or above 95 degree and temperature of lower disk will be around 80 degree and it will not further rise. This is because of heat loss by means of radiation. So, heat is lost from the lower disk.
So the, there is a one more equation that relates heat loss. This is for heat gain. Now we will see an expression for heat loss. So that uh, stage is said to be steady state temperature. Steady state. So at steady state, the temperatures of upper disk T1 and lower disk T2 will not further increase. So I am going to draw, get an expression for steady state temperature. So it's uh, heat heat loss by means of radiation from the wire disc. So rate of heat loss dQ by dT by means of radiation is directly proportional to specific heat capacity of the lower disk into rate of cooling, cooling rate dT capital T for time, uh, temperature and small t for uh, time. Cooling rate, rate of cooling and it can be equated as M into dt by dt that is heat loss as radiation. So at steady states, heat loss from the lower disk must be equal to the amount of heat transfer, rate of heat transfer, heat loss will be equal to the rate of heat gain. So we have to equate these two equations. So you will get, so heat loss is equal to heat gain. So K A T1 minus T2 divided by X equal to heat loss Ms dT by from this what we want is coefficient of thermal conductivity. So K is equal to M S dT by dT all divided by into X divided by A T1 minus T2. Here M is the mass of the lawyer. This S is the specific heat capacity. So what is this specific heat capacity? S is equal to specific heat means amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of a system through 1 degree Celsius. So S is equal to heat, amount of heat input, heat energy divided by del T. raise the temperature of a system through 1 degree and it can be equated as H by heat energy into M degree. So this is the value of specific heat capacity. Okay. Now from this equation S is well known and X is the thickness of the wooden that is insulating slab. So in your experiment, you will use a screw gauge to determine the value of X thickness. Then dT by dT. So T1 minus T2 is the 
temperature of the lower and upper disc t1 is the temperature of the upper disc and t2 is the temperature of the lower disc at steady state temperature so whatever the temperature you observe at steady state you should mention at, at t1 as t1 and t2 and a is the as i already told you a is the area of the cross sectional area for that you have to use a vernier caliper and also pi r square equation so only parameter left is dt by dt rate of that is cooling rate how to determine cooling rate see this cooling rate corresponds to the heat loss of heat energy as radiation radiation loss of heat energy so to determine dt by dt we use that is uh, you just uh, remove after reaching steady state you have to remove the insulating slab and then bring in contact the lower disc with the upper disc now lower disc is in contact with the upper disc the continuously steam is allowed to pass through the upper disc and so now insulating slab is removed now the upper and the lower disc are come in contact with each other each other of course its temperature will not uh, increase further and in the case of lower disc temperature starts to increase from 80 degree celsius to because you have removed an insulator 80 degree so probably 90 degree celsius it may increase to 90 degree celsius so after reaching 90 degree or uh, after that also it will reach a steady state value then you after reaching 90 degree or 93 something like that it will not again it will not further increase because uh, it has reached its uh, steady state temperature so now what you have to do is you have to remove the steam setup turn off the steam and remove the steam setup including a upper disc so the lower disc will be suspended in open air using thread so lower disc is suspended so its temperature is about 90 degree celsius now you have to we using stop plug you have to determine the value of rate of fall of temperature so from 92 there is you have to use temperature versus time so using time clock from 92 to 90 uh, 88 86 84 some up to uh, 70 degree for example up to 70 degree celsius we have to see rate of cooling rate or rate of falling how much time it takes so using temperature in the y axis and uh, time in the x axis you have to plot a graph between temperature and time so you will get a curve from that you can determine the value of dt by dt that is cooling rate can be calculated so this is how you calculate the value of dt by dt so this is the final expression for uh, coefficient of thermal conductivity and what is the unit of coefficient of thermal conductivity as i already told you 
to determine the, the unit of coefficient of thermal kinetic you have to substitute the value of specific heat you should know you should be aware of uh, thermal uh, specific heat capacity unit so specific heat capacity is what is it 1 by m into del t into amount of that is the heat heat energy or q q by m dt so what is the unit of q heat unit of heat is joule and uh, mass is kilogram power minus 1 then you can use either kelvin or uh, degree celsius in this case i use uh, degree celsius so i use kelvin kelvin power minus 1 okay i, I use degree celsius degree celsius power minus 1 so this is the unit of specific heat so in order to determine uh, coefficient uh, that is the unit of uh, coefficient of thermal kinetic let us apply all the units for mass kilogram specific heat joule kilogram power minus 1 degree celsius power minus 1 and in the case of temperature, again, degree Celsius for distance, x thickness, it is meter. Area, meter square. And again, temperature, you will use degree Celsius. And uh, time seconds now you will see meter will get cancelled kilogram kilogram cancel degree celsius will be cancelled out so finally joule second power minus 1 meter power minus 1 degree celsius power minus 1 so this is the unit of uh, coefficient of thermal kinetic or simply way you can simplify joule per second rate of transfer of heat is said to be watt watt or use a single letter what so joule per second is what rate of uh, transfer of heat is what is the power rate of transfer of heat is nothing but power so power, unit of power is what meter power minus one you can use a degree Celsius power minus 1 or degree Kelvin. So, this is the unit for coefficient of thermal conductivity. So, there are some materials. So, the, you will see the values. In the case of uh, silica gel, silica aerogel. silica aerogel the value of uh, thermal conductivity is about 0 0.004 watt per meter per degree celsius and for air it is about 0 0.002 and in the case of uh, wooden material it will range up to 0.3 
for uh, rubber based materials these are all poor conductors so the value of thermal kinetic is very small it is around uh, 0 0.5 watt per meter per degree celsius and for gold it's a very good conductor in the case of gold it is about 380 so it's a very good uh, thermal conductor so you watt per meter per degree celsius and for uh, copper it is about 400 and for uh, diamond diamond it is based on carbon it's about uh, up to 2000 for diamond thermal conductive value is very high and in the case of graphene it is also made up of copper sorry carbon and its thermal conductivity will, will be around up to 5000 watt per meter per degree celsius or kelvin per kelvin so see you in the next lecture